When do I begin, Mom? Now, go ahead. Go <laughs> Saguna ne tunizi, a guegu do dudge. Honor ne tinigane kajuku guegu, a guegu aska, ne the wa wet nuni do what iguna. Tanu the Tsidan Muradun order the Wuna Duka. The Sawyera, Gasa Stansara Goa, Sogoya Dizu. Tisegu, a guegu yoskets, tinizi do Kodago. No order the Wana Duka, ne yetini stan huza, ekadine na yoki, ne no got niguna. So at this time, Following our ancient tradition and tr treaty protocols, I'd like to acknowledge each and every one of you that are gathered here at this particular time. As I'm looking around, we're all seemingly good mind, good health, and good spirit. And when we ask ourselves, why is that? Well, it's because we refer to this as Turtle Island, Mother Earth, and everything that we need for our sustenance and our happiness and our joy is all provided and nothing is missing to everything on this lower world. Then when you look up, the things that are in the sky, the four winds, our grandfather the thunder beings, our elder brother the sun, our grandmother the moon, the stars, the star knowledge, the star people, and we all know that we're participating in a sacred dance of life. So we acknowledge the source of life for all life, the great spirit, the creator, God, and we say that we are grateful and that we are thankful to be here today in good mind, good health, good spirit. And we're all gathered here to talk about the great peace that we sit underneath this great tree and we bring our highest form of good that we can talk about where we are today because we have a responsibility not only to think about today but those future generations that are coming, seven generations ahead so that when they will be born, they will inherit a happy, safe, clean, beautiful, peaceful, loving world and that is our responsibility to them, and we cannot let them down. So now we're in this time where the indigenous spiritual knowledge and wisdom of this turtle island, if we believe it and we follow it, will give us the solutions and guide us so that we will all be able to celebrate and to be grateful for this happy home that we've inherited. Nyaokoa, merci beaucoup, thank you very much. Bonjour tout le monde, merci beaucoup and welcome. Avant de commencer, j'aimerais souligner la présence historique des nations Mohawk, Algonquin, Huron-Wendat et Abenakis dans la grande région de Montréal et sur le territoire de la ville de Montréal où nous nous trouvons aujourd'hui. Je profite également de l'occasion de remercier la ville de Montréal, les Montréalais et les Montréalaises de nous accueillir pour vivre ensemble cette COP15. Très, très approprié que nous fassions cette annonce ici aujourd'hui à, à la biosphère, qui, qui est un projet qui avait été condamné par le gouvernement fédéral précédent et que grâce à une collaboration entre notre gouvernement, le gouvernement du Québec et la ville de Montréal, nous avons pu sauver. Vous vous rappellerez donc que c'est le, le pavillon des États-Unis de, de, de l'Expo 67. Alors, la COP15 est un événement mondial qui va permettre de faire découvrir à des dizaines de milliers de délégués de plus de 196 pays l'énergie, l'audace et l'influence de cette métropole que j'affectionne particulièrement. Mais l'événement qui nous réunit aujourd'hui témoigne que les peuples autochtones sont les leaders environnementaux, avec des perspectives, des connaissances, des cultures, des droits uniques qui peuvent aider à enseigner, à inspirer et à améliorer l'équilibre naturel. Les Premières Nations, les Inuits et les Métis, jouent un rôle 
jouissent d'un très grand respect et jouent un rôle très important pour le respect de la planète. Indigenous people have been stewards of our lands, ice and waters since time immemorial. The impacts of climate change and biodiversity loss are felt as much on their health as on their traditional way of life. Indigenous law, knowledge and science must be at the heart of our approach to addressing these issues. Similarly, Indigenous-led solutions must be at the heart of achieving our ambitious climate and biodiversity goals. Protecting 30% of Canada's lands and waters can only happen with full partnership with Indigenous people. We know that. And we're acting that on that on good faith with Indigenous leadership. With their collaboration, we can make the past a lesson, the present an example, and the future the new standard. To continue in this spirit of collaboration, I would now like to turn the floor over to someone who probably doesn't need much introduction, the 2020 Planetary Leadership Award winner from the National Geographic, uh, someone who has my back all the time uh, on, on, on many of these complex issues, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, uh, to share important developments that will contribute significantly to Canada's conservation goals. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Gonyo Sondir. Uh, thank you so much for your words, your prayer, for starting us off on the right way as you welcoming us to this uh, beautiful territory. Merci, Stephen, pour ton leadership infatigable. C'est grâce à des gens comme toi, dont la vie a été consacrée à protéger la nature et à agir pour le climat, qu'on est ici aujourd'hui. I want to recognize all the leaders and representatives joining us from across the country particularly uh, the Indigenous leadership that's with us today. As you see from uh, this map, um, gathered here today are representatives from every corner of the country uh, with more work to do in other areas uh, that demonstrate uh, that the only way forward uh, is in true partnership, uh, drawing on uh, the wisdom, uh, the respect, uh, and the knowledge that uh, comes from uh, Indigenous people who've protected this land for time immemorial. In 2018, we worked in partnership with the Decho First Nations to establish a Deje, which became Canada's first indigenous protected and conserved area. A Deje in the Northwest Territories represents over 4,000 square kilometers of land, protects headwaters, is home to boreal caribou, and is of cultural and spiritual significance for the Decho and Clicho Dene. This was and remains a major step forward on how we not just protect nature, but do it right. By working in partnership with Indigenous communities, and by listening when Indigenous people tell us that walking forward on reconciliation and making progress on conservation must go together. And if Edeje was a major step on the shared journey, then what we're announcing today is a leap forward. Ce matin, j'annonce que le Canada va investir jusqu'à 800 millions de dollars dans quatre grands projets de conservation dirigés par les peuples autochtones d'un bout à l'autre du pays, qui représentent un total de près de 1 million de kilomètres carrés. Il va y avoir un projet de conservation dans la zone marine du Grand Ours, dans l'Ouest, un autre dans le nord de l'Ontario, le projet de conservation des Omochikego, un projet dans la région de Kikitani, au Nunavut, et un dernier projet dans les territoires du Nord-Ouest. Chaque projet est unique en son genre, et dans quelques instants, leurs représentants vont vous en parler davantage. Canada will provide up to $800 million to support four major Indigenous-led conservation projects across the country, covering almost a million square kilometers. Each of these projects is different because each of these projects is designed, designed by communities, for communities. On the Pacific coast, in the Great Bear Sea, 
We're supporting the group representing 17 First Nations to deliver an integrated bioregional marine conservation and sustainability initiative. Heading north, you'll reach protected boreal forests, rivers and lands across the Northwest Territories in a project that's a partnership between 30 Indigenous governments across the territory supported by the Government of Canada. From there, east and even further north will take you to the Kiktani region and a vast network of protected waters and land safeguarded through Inuit stewardship and governance founded on Inuit Kauyemayuktukangit. And then south to western James Bay and the world's third largest west wetland and a vision of stewardship led by the Omoshkego Cree. Ce projet vise autant à assurer, à assurer le bien-être des communautés qu'à protéger la nature. On sait que pour créer des emplois et favoriser une économie forte, il faut absolument lutter contre les changements climatiques. Eh bien, c'est la même chose pour la protection de la nature. Communities have been clear. Safeguarding lands and waters will help build a strong future for generations to come. As a government, our role is to listen and support that vision. That has been our approach with other initiatives, like the Indigenous Guardians Program, which supports First Nations, Inuit and Métis people on stewardship over traditional lands, waters and ice. The role of partner underpins our approach with these new projects too, alongside others who have committed to join this work. I want to, want to recognize also the leaders from foundations and philanthropic organizations who are part of stepping up to help make these four projects a reality. After all, conservation and protection take money for land planning work, for funding for communities on stewardship and monitoring, for supporting local jobs and growth. It takes resources to create a conservation economy where caring for the land is a career opportunity and where people can be stewards of their own homes. By working together, we're able to deliver that major necessary support no individual partners could provide alone. And that brings me to why it matters that we be announcing this today as Canada welcomes the world to the largest nature cop we've ever seen. Aujourd'hui, on a fait un grand pas dans la protection de la nature et on l'a fait en partenariat. Ici, tous réunis à Montréal, on appelle à tout le monde de passer à l'action. Le monde entier doit en faire plus pour protéger la nature, mais on doit aussi bien le faire. J'espère que les autres pays vont se mobiliser. On espère que les deux prochaines semaines vont confirmer notre engagement collectif pour mener une action mondiale. On a beaucoup à faire pour protéger la nature et on a beaucoup à faire pour avancer sur le chemin de la réconciliation. Mais aujourd'hui, on démontre qu'on le fait ensemble. Encore une fois, merci à tous ceux et celles qui continuent de contribuer à ces efforts. With that, I'm very, very happy to pass it over to Grand Chief Linklater. Awesome. I would like to thank our elder for sharing the short little song, but beautiful, and the words of wisdom. And I'd like to acknowledge the land that we are meeting on today, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, the Abenaki, and Anishinaabe. I'm very grateful for our Indigenous brothers and sisters for welcoming us into their territory. And I'd like to thank uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, Minister Gibbo, my fellow Indigenous leaders, and all of you for gathering here with us today. I'm very honored to be here today to speak on behalf of our people, Omishkego, Ililawak, and Inuak. Omishkego Council represents seven communities, Misnabi Cree, Shaplo Cree, 
Tequitegamo, Moose Cree, Fort Albany, Kasechewan, Attawapiskat. And we often work closely with Winnisk First Nations on a variety of projects. And now we are beginning to develop a relationship with Fort Severn First Nation with regards to this Marine-led initiative. Our people have lived along the James Bay and inland since time immemorial. Our territory is quite vast and makes up almost one third of Ontario. And our, our people continue to use the lands and waters and have named every aspect of the lands and waters. And our people have stewarded the land since, since as long as I can remember. And it's only been recently, within the last 150 years, our ability to protect and look after our lands and waters have been interrupted. And many of our elders and members have asked me to ensure that our lands and waters are respected and protected. So taking care of our homelands is one of my sacred duties as Grand Chief. It is our lands and our waters that connects us to our culture, traditions, language. It is a part of who we are as the Omishkegwa, Ililuak, and Inuak. It also provides healing to our people. And with our, without our lands and waters, we, we do not exist. Within our homelands lies the ancient peatlands. You know, it's been growing for over a thousand years and it stores billions of tons of carbon and these wetlands have been cooling the planet for over a thousand years. And our elders often refer to these lands as the breathing lands. Our wetlands feed many majestic rivers in our territory. These waters flow out to the bay and then into the sea. Many migratory birds go by our area and our lands and our coasts are birthing place for many of North America's birds. There are a number of freshwater fish that live in our waters and move back and forth from the bay and in, in the rivers. Our coastline, line, it's quite long. It's about 1,200 kilometers, almost as long as Hawaii's <coughs> coastline. We are pleased that the Omoshkego responsibility and capacity to conserve and steward our sacred lands and waters is being recognized by Canada and the international and Canadian philanthropic partners of Project Finance for permanence. We look forward to building on this moment in true, in true partnership to create an omushkego led conservation area, an ongoing stewardship pro project. We know our relationship with the lands continue to be important for our people. It is because of this relationship it will help lead to a safe, safer and healthier planet for all. Miigwech. J'aimerais présenter maintenant George qui va, qui va prendre la parole pour, pour le gouvernement du Nunavut. Merci. Good day. My name is George Kovakulaut, and I'm, I am here today representing Klikertanit Inuit Association, and I thank the elder for opening the prayer with a prayer. And it means a lot to us because of the, our ancestors who we re represent. The mass majority of new protected areas in Canada over the past 10 years are the direct result of indigenous, excuse me, my language, English is not that good, but I'll try my best. The indigenous leadership for Kikatanit Inuit, this builds on success of Tadlaroti of Imanga. Canada's largest national marine co conservation area. Kikatanit Inuit proposing a regional approach to managing nearly one million square kilometers of marine environment using the Mersetic of protected area designations, including Inuit protected conserva conserva conservation areas. Uh, my own generation had seen the changes 
so rapidly in a very, very short period of time, especially our climate, our environment, and the behavior of our animals. And it has changed so rapidly in a very short period of time. We need to take some actions, especially amongst the Inuit and the indigenous people who had witnessed all these changes, or who are depending on the environment and the animals that we protect. We are encouraged to see the government of Canada working closely with all par partners in each initiative. This is a great moment for all Canadians. Honorable Prime Minister Trudeau and Honorable Minister Gilbert. In making this announcement, it is important all acknowledgement you are asking Inuit to place test tremendous trust in what your government is able to deliver. We are eager to partner with you to secure conservation and reconciliation outcome by 2025. Inuit expect that. Our work will result in tangible improvements in quality of life in our region. To do so, Inuit in Kikitanic region, we are seeking you to confirm a whole government mandate to advance. With respect to political reconciliation, our region is seeking. In, financial, in final investment in Kikatani Truth Commission through Honorable Minister Miller, we're currently resolved before Minister Freeland for our final decision. With respect of conservation, our region seeks a whole of government mandate that includes policy and target infrastructure commitments that align with the scale and long longevity of parallel regional protected area model. Creation of Inuit-led regional governance system for protected areas, achievement of Kikatanit fisheries reconciliation agreement that will advance economic reconciliation including support for new policies for Nunavut fisheries sector that expand access and participation in fisheries in the Kikatanit region. Sustainable regional protected and modern involving all 13 Kikatanit communities. Direct and sustainable collaboration with communities, the government of Nunavut and the government of Canada, public donors, fund, founders, funders to confirm additional protected areas, marine and terrestrial protection measures. Thank you. Thank you. Jackson, over to you, please, now. Merci. Um, good morning, everyone. Comment de Jose? So, on the Guayan team, Massi, we say. It's on the Zon, the Cal de Deque, and Tundazin, Yatelli, Cal de Sali, and that's on Nights of Guayas in the Massi de Fonde. It's on Prime Minister in Guayawada, as a minister here, Massi, he's in Fonde. The deeds and care you got the team, the good deal there, won't they? Some parts on account are don't a whole dear how would you on there? And I got she, Clinton government, that's only the Prime Minister, Governor of Canada, Kisha Lazada, Tim Wittin, there on there. And I Johnny now would they all said on the Gashin Gosha Hotia, and Dane, your good ideas on the deep for Lazo. And I Dana, Kisha, now what's a son of all? And I Tis on care, Tis on care, Tis on care. What's your new hoodie on there? 
uh, first of all, I'd just like to say uh, good morning and uh, just to recognize that we're on the traditional territory of uh, Mohawk territory, also the Turtle Island. I'd like to uh, say Masi for welcoming us to your traditional territory and uh, to the elder uh, Masi for your blessing for uh, a brand new day today and uh, also to our my fellow colleagues, indigenous leaders from across the country, and to our prime minister and minister Masi for this opportunity. And first of all, I'd just like to say um, it's uh, utter respect and also our tradition is to recognize our elders. And uh, we have a couple elders here with us today from our jurisdiction. And uh, Ethel Blondin Andrews, uh, a lot of people know her and also her husband, um, uh, Mr. Andrews as well. I just want to say Masi for joining us, Leon and Ethel. And it's such a great honor to be before you to speak on this very important matter. My name is Jackson Lafferty. I'm the Grand Chief for Clinton Nation, Clinton Government, Northwest Territories. And uh, it's truly an honor to be here to speak to you and to take part in this very historical um, um, uh, funding announcement today, here today. This funding uh, represents an uh, unprecedented opportunity to invest in indigenous-led cons conservation and stewardship efforts, efforts across, a, across a great country of Canada. So the kind of support that was announced by our Prime Minister today, it is a significant step forward a path forward to reconciliation across Canada. And it will entrust the indigenous people across Canada with resources, the tools that they need to achieve their dream or their vision of our land protection, the conservation now, and also into the future. As one of our leaders indicated, it's all for our younger generation as well. The Clinton people of Northwest Territories have been stewards of the lands and waters, the waterways, throughout our traditional territory of Mofiga de Nitle since time immemorial. Nearly two decades, the Clinton entered into a Clinton agreement, our comprehensive land claims and South government agreement or modern treaty with Government of Canada and Government of Northwest Territories. With this, we gain greater recognition of our rights, authorities, and also jurisdictions. We now own Clinton lands as fee simple and hold surface and subsurface rights within them in the Northwest Territories. Our Clinton lands are in the heart of Mofiga de Nitle and make up upwards of 39,000 square kilometers of our land. We now co-manage land and resources within WIC AG management area, which is also within our tra traditional territory. The Clinton government is leading crucial work on the ground of steward, the land of the Mufiga de Nitle in the WIC AG management area, which consists of various partners on la Clinton land, private lands. As a self-government, that holds surface and also subsurface rights to our lands for the Clinton and protecting lands and conserving biodiversity as a matter of establishing and also implementing our own Clinton laws. It is a matter of working together with our treaty partners, such as Canada and Government of Northwest Territories, to co manage, as Prime Minister indicated on various occasions true partnership. Taking care of our lands and water is our key priorities for our Clinton government, our Clinton people, our Clinton nation, just as they are for indigenous people across our great country, as you've heard from our indigenous leaders. We have witnessed firsthand the decline of our caribou in the Northwest Territories 
and many, many challenges and changes to our land due to industries and climate change. We live with these impacts. These changes have on our well-being of our lives and our way of life. We have many programs in place to prevent further decline and to preserve our lands and waters and the diverse wildlife within them for future generations to come. We have already protected many culturally and environmentally important areas through our Klinchon lands protection, the laws, and also Klinchon Wenneke, our Klinchon land use. We have been working hard to protect Dunai a portion of our North, North Arm of Great Slave Lake. It's a place of a powerful spiritual gathering significance to the Klinchon as inhabited by many species at risk. For the Klinchon in the Northwest Territories and the other indigenous le leaders and groups across Canada, we are already doing important work as we are here witnessing today. But we do, over the years, lack of resources, sufficient resources to get the job done, to achieve all that we envision, both in short term and also long term. The funding announced here today by our Prime Minister recognizes the critical importance and the incredible opportunity that Indigenous-led stewardship presents. And again, it is a true partnership. This has the potential to improve the well-being of our people across our great north and our Canada, move us forward on the path towards reconciliation. And we've heard that over and over, even from our Prime Minister, reconciliation is a tool now. This funding will be a powerful tool to ensure that Indigenous people across Canada are able to realize their vision of conservation and protection of charter of our path to a better future of all Canadians. With that, Mr. Prime Minister, Masi Cho, for your announcement today. Masi Cho. Dallas, can I invite you now to the podium? Stopwatch. Gaelic has a gig of me. I just want to thank you for the wonderful opening and putting our hearts and souls in the right place. Wow. I don't even know where to start. I was all ready to show my Every Child Matters t-shirt and talk about the challenges our communities still face on a daily basis. But it's important to keep picture of the fact that we're taking control of our own destiny again, thanks to today's wonderful announcement. Thank you to both of you for this tremendous bold step. First, I want to thank my colleague Christine Smith-Martin for being here with us and helping with the leadership to bring our communities to this position where we can take advantage of the opportunities that partnership brings to us. I was on a podium like this 15 years ago when we announced the protection of the terrestrial lands of the Great Bear Rainforest. We protected 70% of our terrestrial territories. I did media all over the world and I got home and my elders said, don't sprain your arm patting yourself on the back <laughs> because until you do the marine component, it doesn't mean anything. And so to take these steps to bring that holistic view of our lands and resources and to be in a position to take a real run at managing the impacts of climate change and human development is a real special place to be, not only for our communities, but for those communities around us. These four communities have shown a leadership and they've taken steps that have enabled them to step forward and show that we can do things right. I want to thank the philanthropic community who believed in the visions of First Nations communities to go in the right path. 
Having a fairy godmother isn't enough, though. It takes leadership, and it takes leadership by all the parties involved to get us to where we need to go in today's crucial times of climate change and what we're dealing with. I think one of the most important messages that we're delivering as Indigenous people with our colleagues here on the stage and across Canada is we're not simply dependent on the ecosystems that we protect and manage and commit to maintain as we have since millennia. We're simply a healthy part of that and if those ecosystems aren't healthy, we can't consider our communities healthy. And this funding opportunity gives us a true opportunity to get there and show that that balance can be there. I believe in a blue economy. I believe in the direction that you're taking this country in. And I'm very honored that you're including our communities to go there beside you. Gaila Kasla, thank you. Je pense que euh, c'est extraordinairement important euh, de prendre encore un moment pour remercier euh, ces leaders au Québec. On sait que la langue est importante, euh, donc je veux le faire dans leur propre langue. Miigwech, Kuyanamik, Masicho, Gaila Kosla. Uh, thank you very much for everything you guys are bringing today in your confidence uh, in the land, confidence in your people, and confidence in the partner, partnership we are building right now. C'est un moment extrêmement important pour le Canada, mais un exemple aussi pour le monde. Uh, et uh, on est ravi de vous avoir ici avec nous aujourd'hui. Merci. Merci. Merci beaucoup, M. le Premier ministre. On va commencer la période des questions pour 20 minutes, en commençant avec le premier journaliste. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Kyle Mazza from UNF News. Nice to see you and hope you're well. On the heels of the COP conference, there's been diversity, there's been inclusion, and, and also uh, bringing together everyone. On the heels of that, back in the United States, anti-Semitism is on the rise. Many, many, many are talking uh, hate and, and, and spewing bigotry, including Ye, former, formerly known as Kanye West. So what would you say to those who are saying these things and spouting these anti-Semitism tropes? H how would you respond to that as a country that prides itself on inclusion and diversity? Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you for your question. And I think we're seeing here uh, at this largest nature cop in history what happens when people come together uh, and listen to a range of perspectives uh, and knowledges in respect and in partnership uh, to move forward. And indeed, as you point out, Canada is one of the places in the world where uh, we do diversity as well, if not better, than most other places. Um, we know uh, that tolerance is not enough. I mean, if you think about it, tolerating someone is putting up with them, is barely allowing them to exist as long as they don't bother you. There isn't a religion in the world that says, tolerate thy neighbor. Um, we talk about acceptance, friendship, and love. And that's what we have to stay focused on, that level of deep, deep respect and ability to learn from each other. But let's not kid ourselves. Canada isn't some magical place. Like every uh, part of the world, particularly after the pandemic, we've seen an increase in hate crimes, an increase in intolerance, in anti-Semitism, in Islamophobia, in anti-Asian racism, in anti-black racism, in uh, indigenous uh, racism, anti-indigenous racism, uh, anti-LGBT, uh, hateful commentary. And it reminds us that we all have to stay vigilant that we all have a responsibility to speak up and be allies. It cannot just be for uh, the Jewish community to speak out on anti-Semitism. It's up to all of us to do that. And I think that's something that Canadians and people around the world are expecting of themselves, of their neighbors, of everyone. Unfortunately, we're seeing a rise in polarization in hatred and intolerance, and it's up to everyone who sees it to call it out and to stand against it. It is unacceptable that these narratives are growing and being 
encouraged and enhanced by those who should know better. And all of us have a role to play in making sure that fundamental respect and uh, openness towards each other uh, continues to be at the heart of our um, strong communities. Merci. Merci. Prochaine question. Good morning. Morgan Lowry from the Canadian Press. Uh, briefly shifting to another topic. Um, Muslim charities say they're being unfairly singled out for audits by the Canada Revenue Agency. And the CRA Ombudsman now says he can't access the information he needs to look into it. Will the government simply abolish the 2015 National Risk Assessment developed by the Harper government that allowed these audits to happen? We know uh, that uh, Muslim charities in Canada uh, have faced systemic challenges and barriers that go back many, many years, indeed, uh, starting with actions under the previous government. And I can assure you that this government uh, has continued uh, to work towards uh, creating uh, accountability and openness and ensuring uh, that this systemic discrimination no longer happens. Our uh, Revenue Minister Diane Le Boutillier has been taking this extremely seriously with a CRA that is. Uh, an arm's length agency, but we know there is significantly more to do, and we will look at uh, what next steps can be taken. Prochaine question. Bonjour, Raymond Filion de TVA. Pour revenir au sujet d'aujourd'hui, plusieurs personnes à travers le Canada disent que davantage de territoires devraient aussi être protégés dans le sud, là où les gens sont très nombreux. Ici, à Montréal, il y a le Technoparc, près de l'aéroport pierre Elliott trudeau qui est un vaste endroit euh, où vivent des espèces euh, menacées. Pourquoi votre gouvernement refuse d'acquiescer à la demande des maires, entre autres, qui demandent à ce que ce soit protégé? Euh, on sait que si on veut atteindre le 30 euh, d'air protégé de notre terre et de nos euh, zones marines, euh, nous allons devoir faire beaucoup, beaucoup plus que juste ce qu'on voit ici. Euh, on sait que protéger 30 de notre territoire va exiger qu'on fasse énormément de partenariats. D'abord et avant tout, Uh, des partenariats avec les peuples autochtones qui protègent ces territoires depuis des millénaires et ont uh, la, les connaissances et uh, l'approche, la sensibilité pour continuer à protéger pour les prochaines générations. Mais nous devons aussi évidemment travailler avec uh, les autres ordres de gouvernement, les provinces, uh, les municipalités et nous sommes là pour faire le travail. Euh, il y a bien des projets qu'on est en train de regarder, et je vais euh, souligner ce, ce projet et cette initiative-là, euh, mais euh, nous allons continuer de faire le travail de façon euh, agressive parce qu'on se doit de protéger nos territoires pour les futures générations futures et on se doit de démontrer aussi l'exemple aux autres pays du monde qui euh, doivent en faire pareil. Stephen, as-tu un commentaire là-dessus? Merci. Merci, M. le Premier ministre. Brièvement, euh Bon, je pense que en politique, c'est de bonne guerre d'un parti d'opposition de lancer une pétition et dire au gouvernement « si vous n'êtes pas d'accord avec ma pétition, vous n'êtes pas d'accord avec le projet ». Ce n'est évidemment pas le cas. Nous travaillons activement avec l'aéroport de Montréal. Je travaille, même avant mon arrivée au ministère de l'Environnement, avec les groupes locaux, la Ville de Montréal et l'aéroport de Montréal. Et comme vous le savez probablement, nous avons, nous avons lancé des consultations pour inscrire le, le, le papillon monarque sur la liste des espèces en péril du gouvernement du Canada, ce qui va nous donner des pouvoirs supplémentaires pour protéger l'habitat du papillon, sur tout les, notamment sur tous les terres fédérales, incluant les terres qui sont sous administration, par exemple, par aéroport de Montréal. Merci. In English, please, Prime Minister. In English. Uh, we know that there's an awful lot of work to do here in Canada and indeed around the world to hit the essential target of protecting 30% of our land, 30% of our water by 2030. But that's an essential step if we're going to halt and reverse the decline of biodiversity around the world. And that's something that matters deeply, not just to people in a moral sense of having clean air and fresh water for generations to come, but our economy, all of our activities rely on ecosystems that are healthy and resilient. And that's why we're moving forward significantly. We are uh, obviously moving forward on some very big partnerships with Indigenous communities uh, in the lead to be able to protect uh, large parts of Canada. Uh, but there's work to do in every 
corner of the country. We don't get there unless we all uh, step up and are part of it, and we'll be uh, looking to provinces and municipalities uh, as well as the private sector and civil society to be full partners as we reach this ambitious goal that will help us fight climate change, help us have more resilient uh, communities and ecosystems, uh, and uh, protect the biodiversity that keeps our world uh, strong and, uh, and rich. Prochaine question. Hi, David Thurton from CBC. Good morning, Prime Minister. Uh, two quick questions, and if you could respond in French and English, that would be amazing. Just how is it going getting the premiers on board to support your, the work that needs to be done to expand these protected areas? And then secondly, of course, Radio, Can Radio Canada is reporting that the RCMP is using equipment from an organization that has ties to the Chinese regime, an organization, a firm that was banned or blacklisted in the United States. Will your government do what I think people are expecting your government to do when they read a story like that, which is just rip out that equipment? And in French and English, please. Um, first of all, uh, the announcements we're making today are an example of what can happen uh, when we work hand in hand uh, with partners to protect uh, large swaths of Canada's land uh, for the future. Uh, obviously, Indigenous uh, partnerships are at the centre of that because uh, we know uh, that the world not only looks to Canada as a place where nature is protected and we're doing the right things on fighting climate change, but as a place that is showing real leadership on uh, what reconciliation with Indigenous peoples, with people who've uh, shown the way on stewardship for millennia, um, in order to move forward. That's not to say we, we always get it right on uh, Indigenous reconciliation. There's much more work to do. Uh, but this is an example of those positive partnerships that can happen. And I know uh, that uh, all of these organizations have worked directly with provincial and territorial governments on, uh, on protections. And uh, we as a federal government will continue to work with provinces and territories uh, as we reach these ambitious goals. Uh, was pleased to hear Premier Legault yesterday announce uh, that Quebec has a plan to reach 30 uh, percent by 2030 as well. Uh, we're going to need all of us to step up together if we're going to reach this, and I look forward to that work. It's extremely important to work with our partners to protect our nature for the future. Évidemment, le partenariat avec les peuples autochtones euh, est à la base de l'annonce aujourd'hui. C'est un exemple pour le monde. Mais je peux dire que toutes ces communautés autochtones ont aussi travaillé avec les gouvernements provinciaux et territoriaux euh, dans leurs projets. Et nous, en tant que gouvernement fédéral, on va toujours travailler avec euh, les territoires et les provinces euh, pour euh, protéger notre environnement et lutter contre les changements climatiques. Je peux souligner que c'était une très bonne nouvelle euh, que le gouvernement du Québec, euh, que François Legault a annoncé hier euh, qu'il avait un plan pour atteindre le 30 de protection euh, des terres du Québec d'ici 2030. Euh, on va continuer de travailler ensemble pour, euh, sur ce but euh, partagé. In regards, um, to the news on uh, the contracts. I find it disconcerting that while uh, parts of the government security agencies um, were advising us as a government and as Canadians uh, that we have to be very careful about foreign interference in our institutions, in our structures, in, our, uh, in the way we uh, do business and keep Canadians safe, that other parts uh, of the civil service were signing contracts uh, that have questionable uh, levels of uh, security uh, for our operations and our uh, national security institutions like uh, the RCMP. So absolutely we're going to be following up on this, uh, finding out, uh, first of all, what needs to be done to ensure uh, that our communications technology is uh, secure, but also make sure we're figuring out how this could continue to happen. Uh, and make sure that Canada is not uh, signing contracts with the lowest bidder that then turn around and leave us exposed to uh, security flaws. Uh, we will have uh, some real questions for uh, the independent public service that uh, signed these contracts, uh, and we'll make sure uh, that uh, this has changed uh, going forward. It's high time that happens. Je pense que c'est préoccupant de voir que pendant certains secteurs de la fonction publique, que nos euh, agences de sécurité et de renseignement euh, nous parlent depuis bien des années des inquiétudes euh, qu'ils ont par rapport à l'ingérence et l'interférence étrangère, 
dans nos institutions, dans nos, euh, euh, nos, nos mesures euh, de sécurité, que d'autres fonctionnaires dans d'autres parties de notre gouvernement soient en train de signer des contrats euh, avec des compagnies qui ne sont pas euh, des partenaires, qui ne sont probablement pas des partenaires fiables en matière de sécurité. Donc, nous allons avoir deux questions hein, pour, euh, pour la fonction publique. D'abord, euh, qu'est-ce qu'on doit faire immédiatement pour sécuriser l'intégrité de nos communications euh, par rapport à la GRC et autres instances que nous avons? Mais aussi, comment est-ce qu'on va s'assurer qu'on arrête de signer des contrats euh, avec euh, des compagnies qui euh, ne sont pas fiables à ce niveau-là? Prochaine question. Bon matin, Étienne Fortin-Gauthier avec Nouveau Info. Lundi, à la COP15, la Russie a tenté de paralyser les discussions en matière d'égalité hommes-femmes euh, et de biodiversité. J'aimerais avoir votre réaction, M. Trudeau. Et, et M. Guilbeault, pourquoi est-ce que l'enjeu du genre est aussi important pour le Canada et d'autres pays et défendu à cette COP15? Tout d'abord, euh, c'est un, un, une COP gérée par les Nations unies et donc, à cause de ça, euh, tous les pays euh, sont invités, même des pays euh, comme la Russie qui sont euh, des acteurs extrêmement euh, néfastes euh, sur euh, l'échec mondial ces jours-ci, pas juste avec leur invasion euh, irresponsable et illégale de l'Ukraine, mais avec leur, leur oppression continue contre euh, les communautés LGBT, les femmes euh, et d'autres. Euh, donc, euh, oui, euh, nous allons toujours défendre les valeurs d'ouverture, de diversité, l'égalité homme-femme. Et ce n'est pas juste une question de, de, de principe moral. On sait que pour la paix, la sécurité, la stabilité d'une communauté, bâtir un avenir meilleur, les femmes sont essentielles. Si on comptait juste sur les hommes, euh, ce serait moins fait. Ce serait moins bien fait. On sait que quand il y a un grand défi, il faut compter euh, sur les mères, les grands-mères, euh, les femmes dans les communautés pour mener euh, les initiatives de sécurité, de paix, d'environnement. Euh, et donc, nous allons continuer de défendre euh, la diversité et l'égalité euh, dans tout le travail qu'on fait. D'ailleurs, euh, c'est des principes qui sont euh, protégés par les Nations unies eux-mêmes euh, et nous nous attendons à ce que euh, ce soit, ça fasse partie intégrale du travail que nous allons faire ici à Montréal, ici au Canada. Mais euh, je suis content de passer la parole à Steven. Je n'ai rien à ajouter, M. le Premier ah, ministre. Bon, bon. <rire> des fois, il y a des détails par rapport à la COP, mais c'est beau. Mais, M. Guilbeault, pourquoi l'enjeu du genre en biodiversité? Expliquez-nous ce, cet enjeu-là. Ben, si je peux ajouter sur ce que le premier ministre a dit, euh, nous savons que les victimes des impacts des, des changements climatiques, les victimes de la perte de nature, de biodiversité, sont les peuples autochtones et sont notamment les femmes. Alors, d'avoir une perspective à la fois sur, au niveau des peuples autochtones, mais aussi une perspective féministe dans le cadre de ces négociations-là, c'est une façon de nous assurer que les solutions que nous mettons de l'avant sont adaptées aux gens qui en subissent le plus les impacts et qui vont aussi être au cœur, comme c'est le cas aujourd'hui, des solutions que nous allons trouver à ces grands problèmes environnementaux. Prochaine question. Gabrielle Proud, Radio-Canada. Euh, juste pour enchérir sur la question de mon collègue de CBC euh, en lien avec euh, Sinclair Technologies, là, qui est détenu en partie par des intérêts chinois, euh, je comprends que vous attendez euh, des réponses de la fonction publique, mais est-ce que vous allez tout de même revoir les critères de sécurité en matière euh, d'appel d'offres, puis est-ce que vous vous attendez aussi à ce qu'on annule carrément le contrat? Bien, certainement, il va falloir euh, revoir les protocoles de sécurité par rapport aux appels d'offres. Euh, en tant que gouvernement, on s'attend à ce que euh, des comptes de ce style euh, soit octroyé de façon rigoureuse et indépendante. Oui, on veut avoir, euh, avoir des contrats à, à prix abordable pour euh, les, contribueurs, les contribuables, euh, mais euh, on doit s'assurer de l'intégrité de la sécurité. Et évidemment, euh, selon les, les rapports qu'on lit, euh, ça n'a pas été fait dans cette situation-là. Alors, on va absolument faire des suivis. Euh, par rapport à, à quelles, quelles mesures on doit prendre maintenant, pour assurer la sécurité de nos communications, euh, on va évidemment regarder ça de très proche et on va prendre les mesures appropriées, euh, mais euh, c'est trop tôt pour dire exactement ce dont on va avoir besoin. En anglais, s'il vous plaît. OK. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we count as a government on uh, independent civil servants uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, sign contracts 
uh, and uh, ensure rigorous processes of evaluations of, uh, of uh, partners uh, on a range of um, initiatives that the government requires, uh, whether it be uh, um, procurement or others. Um, and obviously, we have to ensure uh, that it is explicitly spelled out uh, that sensitive contracts that implicate issues of national security uh, need to be uh, provided to uh, only uh, reliable, uh, reliable uh, uh, sources of procurement. We will, of course, look at uh, whether uh, our community, community uh, communication systems are compromised. Um, obviously, we're just uh, looking into it right now, following on this report, uh, and we will make sure that we take the necessary steps. But it's too early to say what the necessary steps to ensure the integrity of our communication systems could be. Une dernière question. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Pierre Saint-Arnaud de la Presse canadienne. Euh, je regarde les territoires dont il est question ici. Ce sont des territoires qui sont vastes, ce sont des territoires qui sont riches en ressources naturelles. Quelles sont les garanties dans vos ententes de protection de ces territoires-là par rapport à l'exploitation des richesses naturelles? Quelle protection a-t-on et quelle entente a-t-on sur une éventuelle explo exploitation des richesses s'il y en a une qui sera permise? Mais, euh, tout d'abord, on sait très bien euh, que euh, le Canada continue d'avoir énormément de ressources naturelles dont non seulement les Canadiens, mais les gens à travers le monde ont besoin. Euh, quand on regarde notre stratégie de minéraux critiques, euh, qui sont essentielles pour, euh, pour le développement de batteries électriques, euh, pour le développement de nouvelles technologies à travers le monde, particulièrement qu'il y a des endroits comme la Chine et la Russie qui sont pourvoyeurs de ces minéraux, qui sont de moins en moins fiables sur l'échiquier mondial. Il y a une opportunité pour le Canada d'être là pour fournir les ressources dont nous avons tous besoin dans la transition vers un monde net zéro carbone neutre. Mais le développement et l'exploitation de ces ressources doit être fait de façon responsable. Et ça, c'est responsable au niveau de l'environnement et de la pollution mais aussi responsable au niveau des retombées économiques. Et c'est pour ça que le partenariat avec les peuples autochtones est tellement important. Quand on parle de leur territoire, de leurs droits, il faut qu'ils soient, euh, qu'ils fassent partie de tout travail d'exploitation de, de, ou de développement qui se fait sur ces territoires-là. Alors, euh, en signant ces accords, ces intentions et en développant les modalités et les spécificités, c'est eux euh, qui vont euh, faire partie de la discussion de okay, où on devrait plus protéger, où il y aurait de la place pour du développement et à quelles conditions ils vont axer ce développement-là. C'est une question de reconnaître qu'on ne peut pas développer nos ressources sans le faire en partenariat de façon intègre avec euh, les Premières Nations avec les, euh, les Inuits et les Métis. Euh, alors, c'est une nouvelle approche, mais les détails, euh, comme vous soulignez, euh, vont être à regarder, à négocier au, au fur et à mesure qu'on développe euh, ces aires protégées pour permettre, oui, un développement responsable du territoire de façon économique, pour créer des emplois euh, en ressources naturelles, tout en s'assurant de la protection réelle et long terme euh, de ces aires euh, vulnérables. I think it's extremely important to highlight that Canada is a country of natural resources. We have so many of the critical minerals, in particular, that the world needs and that the world is now looking uh, to China, at China and Russia, for example, as increasingly unreliable suppliers of the essential minerals and resources needed for uh, our transition towards a net zero world. So Canada can and will be a reliable supplier of the minerals the world needs in the world. But part of being a reliable supplier means doing it right, means uh, putting environmental protections at the heart of everything we do, and mostly ensuring that future development happens not just in consultation with, but in full partnership with Indigenous peoples. 
And you know, those discussions around what areas we need to make sure are completely protected and where there can be responsible development are exactly the kinds of things that uh, partnerships uh, with Indigenous peoples uh, will lead on. Because we know we need jobs. We know we need uh, protected areas. We know we need economic development. Nobody knows that and the importance of that balance better than Indigenous communities themselves that have been left out of this equation, not just in Canada, but around the world for too long. So what we're doing now with these areas is highlighting that this partnership on developing areas to protect and how to protect them and how to make, that, make sure that goes hand in hand with responsible targeted development where it makes sense, it's not something for us to decide as governments or as multinationals anymore. It's uh, something uh, for Indigenous peoples to decide what happens uh, on their territory in their areas. And the steps we're taking today about ensconcing that partnership deep uh, in our path towards 2030 and towards net zero uh, is what this announcement is all about. Merci beaucoup. C'est ce qui met à la conférence de presse d'aujourd'hui.